So by this point, when it comes to the Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G, we all know that faster memory is better. It's one of the few cases where things scale quite literally when you go from slower RAM to faster RAM. But what we wanted to find out today was, can you overcompensate that faster, more expensive RAM by overclocking the Vega 11 GPU core? So what we've got here today on our Apollo Ridge test bench, which is our uh, test system for the Ryzen 5 2400G that we'll be using going forward. You want to see more about that? Hit the link in the corner. Anyway, back to the story. So what we're doing is we're taking the Ryzen 5 2400G at stock GPU settings on the Vega 11 at 1250 megahertz, paired with the faster 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 Flare X kit that stays in the test system. And then we're going to say the same test running with a pair of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 2400 CL15. So slower, less expensive RAM, but we're gonna overclock the Vega 11 GPU core to 1600 megahertz. We're gonna see if that GPU core offset can counter the much slower RAM. Now the RAM is much slower than the overclock is. And of course, the 3200 megahertz RAM with the Vega 11 running at 1600 megahertz would ideally be the best case scenario, but that's not what we're looking for. We're just wanting to see, can the GPU core overtake or match the faster memory clock to make up for a memory clock deficit if it exists. So for all of these tests, the CPU was left at its stock settings because we're not testing CPU performance, we're testing graphics performance. So first thing we tested was 3D Mark Skydiver. And we see here that, well, it's really within margin of error. We're talking uh, 13 point difference. So 12,639 to 12,626 would lead you to believe that once you get into gaming, you're probably not gonna see much of a difference at all. Let's see what happens with our first game, being Bioshock Infinite run at 1080p low settings. We see about a 10 FPS difference on the average FPS and even more than that on the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows. So even the slower clock can is faster with faster memory. The story is very similar here at Dirt Rally, although not quite as big of a deficit. A six, per, a six FPS difference at 1080p average, uh, the 1080p low settings average FPS is still noticeable. It dropped below that 60 FPS, although the percentage lows stayed pretty tight. Moving into more demanding game like Prey at 1080p low settings, we see again about the same difference. Now the point, the one percent lows and the 0.1 percent lows didn't change a whole lot based on the memory speed but the overclock on the core did help maintain those. So uh, still much lower average, but fairly consistent on the low end. Resident Evil 7 shows a pretty significant change on the 0.1% lows and the 1% lows. That, well, more so the 0.1% lows, but that's enough to change the feel of the game. Uh, the average FPS was a bit unfortunate, but that's the reality of it. So Moving into the last title that we tested, which was Rise of the Tomb Raider, we see at 1080p with low settings on DX11, we see that there are no results for the overclock because it hit thermal shutdown in this game and the, the GPU core hit the dreaded 95 degrees Celsius on the Wraith Stealth Cooler. But we're going to be replacing that cooler very soon with the Arctic Freezer 33. So we'll see how much that makes a difference. So at the end of the day, can the GPU core overtake and keep things going with this pair, even with paired with slower memory? Not really. Sure, Skydiver, it looked like it could, and it, it proved to be quite hopeful. And to be quite honest, I was actually hoping the overclock could help with the memory because a GPU core overclock is typically more effective than a memory clock overclock. But it shows here that the... Vega 11, thanks to its 704 string processors, is a bit memory starved. So the more memory you give it, the better it can get. So no, you're not gonna be able to overtake the faster memory speed by simply overclocking. So something to keep in mind, well, you know, that's up to you. This again, wasn't a buyer's guide, wasn't a review, wasn't anything other than to see, will it do it? All right guys, this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. And as always, we'll catch you in the next one.